Well, it is a very special day on which to welcome you to the start of Manchester City's title defence. Point for point, goal for goal, the most compelling, convincing champion the Premier League has ever known. Stunning! Manchester City are purring right from the off. And Aguero goes for elevation and achieves perfection. This could open up for Kyle Walker. Oh, wow! Who on earth stops them? Welcome to the Etihad for the coming together of the champions and those who would be kings. Sané, 2-1. That is a proper response. Fernando Silva scores. City are on top of the league. Company had a look, had a hit. Oh, for a goal from his wildest dreams. Riyad Mahrez, brilliant, just brilliant on this day of days. Still, the champions in 2019 are Manchester City. He is a genius. Hey guys, you are listening to the EPL show here on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. Follow the Sports Gambling Podcast Network on Twitter at the SGP Network. The EPL is back and we are coming off a record-breaking season where our lot record was 47 and 11. So it wasn't only Manchester City and Liverpool putting up ridiculous points totals it was us as well who put up a 47 and 11 lot record this season we hope to achieve that again although what i will say straight off the bat there will not be double locks this season so we will not be posting as many picks there will be a lock dog and parlay every single week and um for the rest of the picks, you need to head over to lockbetting.com. It's the home of the European show. That's where you will be getting your European podcast every week, European bets, and the rest of your EPL bets. To counter that somewhat, I will be doing an additional article each week for the Sports Gambling Podcast Network on their website, sportsgamblingpodcast.com. That will be reviewing the game of the week with a combined 11 each week. And I will be predicting the score lines of the 10 Premier League games each week. So although you will be only strictly getting one lock a week, you will be getting an additional article with a combined 11 and scoreline predictions. That is not a replacement for this podcast. So if you're thinking that you don't need to listen to the show now and you can save time by listening to that, you can't do that because there will not be a parlay on there. There won't be a dog. There won't be a lock. You won't get my opinions. Therefore, I think by listening to the show, you would agree that you get a stronger feel for the direction that I'm going in. In addition to that, you won't get goal scorer bets. You won't get over-unders. You won't get handicaps and things of that nature. So you won't get a proper in-depth preview unless you stick here with the EPL show. It's just an additional fun little thing that we're doing where I enter my scoreline predictions each week review the game of the week and put forward a combined 11 the fantasy picks will also be remaining here on the epl show so that's just a bit of housekeeping the reason why i'm sticking it to one lock a week is simply because i do have premium paid members that are paying for soccer packages and it does seem unfair to give out a whole ton of free plays here on the podcast but you will be still getting that one a week a double lock was just something that we decided to implement last year because obviously confidence was at a premium when we were heading towards that massive 47 and 11 total uh, at one point i believe we went on a 21 and 21 and run 21 and one run finally got it out there 21 and one run to um really bolster that total up so a very 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 good year and a very very good title race last year with liverpool and man city the two teams that open up the season but it's in reverse this year with liverpool starting first on the friday despite the fact they're not the champions and manchester city waiting for the saturday morning slash saturday early afternoon game but certainly will be saturday morning in the states but early afternoon here and then the three o'clock kickoffs really get things rolling on saturday one thing i need you guys to bear in mind when betting this week it does look very very easy on 
paper. Now, a quick look at this Premier League fixture list. And you would think that the newly promoted sides are getting nothing from the offset. Villa going to Tottenham, Norwich going to Liverpool and Sheffield United going to Bournemouth, who are obviously a very established Premier League team. You then look further on from that and you can see other fixtures where you think that it's a relatively easy play with Arsenal going to Newcastle, Newcastle being in somewhat turmoil with the assumption being that the players are demoralised with the exit of Rafa Benitez. I wouldn't necessarily think that would be guaranteed to be the case. Um, you have some interesting games on there where you really don't know what way it's going to go with Manchester United versus Chelsea. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has a full summer in charge. Frank Lampard, an ex-Chelsea player, is the new manager. Will he be able to take to it, uh, managing a big team after only previously managing Derby? Lots and lots of questions and um, seemingly a lot of stuff here that looks too easy. If it looks too easy, it probably is. So I'm going to stray away from making any majorly massive two, three unit plays here on the opening day, not just because we don't know who teams are, not just because we don't know who's going to be massively inspired by the start of the Premiership, but there's also fitness issues. I don't think Man City and Liverpool are going to roll into this season as the unbeatable, unstoppable teams that they were last year. And I'm not going to say they're not going to win all their first few games, but Liverpool might not necessarily cover a two-goal handicap against Norwich. Man City always win at West Ham, but they may not necessarily win comfortably on Saturday against West Ham, just simply because it's the first game of the season and a lot of other things factor in, such as fitness and when players turned up from pre-season. A lot of players played international football. There was a Copa America. There was a Gold Cup. There was an African Nations Cup that was played. Um, there was also a Women's World Cup, which is completely irrelevant to this, thankfully, because we won't need to be talking about women's football anymore. And especially Megan Rapino, who I can't stand um, and have made that clear. Um, one thing we won't be touching on too much on this podcast is the outright prices, because me and James George have done two separate podcasts, one available tomorrow after the transfer window closes, um, officially transfer window closes tomorrow and then we'll be putting a podcast that will be available on Friday that will be EPL show uh, season preview part two part one is currently available uh, at the moment although I don't think opinions have, t- have changed too much because the window hasn't been majorly active and although there are a lot of rumors and a lot of players uh, a lot of clubs sorry that want to go out and sign players I wouldn't necessarily be that optimistic that a lot is going to get done tomorrow because what sort of club sells major players on the final day of the window. It would be mainly looking at Premier League clubs doing business with European clubs. So the likes of um, Wilfred Zaha, for example, to get over the line, I just wouldn't think Palace would be parting with that kind of player on the final day of the window. Although saying that, it's very likely that David Luiz is going to join Arsenal. But once the transfers are confirmed, me and James will be doing part two and we'll be making some of the picks that we made on the last show official because we kind of skated around um, and made a few leans and focused a lot on fantasy whereas the next podcast we will be primarily focusing on picks and that's where you can get your uh, premiership odds for goal scorers and top four and relegation and outrights in, in fact outrights is something I will touch on just to give you an indication in case you haven't listened to that show Man City open as the 8-15 to favourites Liverpool are available at 9-4 to then it's a massive leap to Tottenham at 18-1 to it's 40-1 to Chelsea 40-1 to Man United 66-1 to on Arsenal so you kind of get the, the feel there as to what the bookies are thinking me personally um, I think Liverpool probably did need to add, despite the fact that they are the the champion, uh, the ch- the champions of the Champions League, and uh, already we are talking uh, uh, about the two managers having cross words of each other uh, prior to the Community Shield in terms of Pep defending his spending and Klopp saying that Liverpool, uh, that Manchester City, sorry, live in a fantasy land, and very quickly was able to throw on a few other teams into that equation. Yes, he said City, but he also said Real and Barca and, and PSG almost to cover himself, not to make it so obvious that the uh, psychological welfare had begun this early on in the season. But it but it has done, and it's not surprising that the two managers clearly identify each other as the, the biggest competition to each other. And it will be very surprising to see any of these 
others get into the title race, that being Tottenham, Man United, Chelsea or Arsenal. I think the top four is going to be the aim for those. Although Tottenham, I think, out of those, will be looking to get a lot closer, especially if they do make any of these signings that are speculated to make with the likes of Coutinho and Dabala rumoured. I'll be surprised if they get one of those two, but we'll see. We'll all find out tomorrow, which is why me and James are holding back to do the second part of our preview tomorrow. Looking at the fixtures now, we'll start with Liverpool versus Norwich, where Liverpool are the 1-8 to favourites to win this game. It's 7-1 to the draw, and it's 18-1 to on Norwich. Interestingly here, um, for fantasy players, this will be the big fantasy game of the weekend. Now, I say that because I've seen a lot of teams, and I've seen a lot of YouTube uh, channels that recommend who you should play and how you should pick your team. And they are loaded with Liverpool defenders, namely Robertson and uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold. But a lot of people will be going for Van Dijk. I personally think Joe Gomez is a good pick as well because um, he will probably be the centre-back choice initially uh, above Lovren. And I think Matip may be moving into a defensive midfielder kind of role. Now, that's interesting because... A lot of managers will be reliant on a clean sheet. They will also be reliant on Mo Salah to score the goals because he's the most captained player um, for the uh, Premier League Fantasy Week 1. And he will be playing, obviously, on Friday for Liverpool. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any problem with him not playing. He managed to play the Community Shield last week. I think Mane will be the only doubt. And I wouldn't be surprised if he played himself as well because the mind games obviously started with both managers saying they had a whole ton of players missing from this tournament and that tournament and Jurgen Klopp has since played all of these players with the exception of Sadio Mane and uh, Pep Guardiola has played all of the players as well with the exception of Edison and Aguero so all of these players that they named as not being ready for the start of the season have already not only played in preseason fixtures but appeared in last weekend's Community Shield which was won by Man City. Now, the reason I touched on the the clean sheet part is because I'm I'm not sure if this Liverpool defence are necessarily going to start in check and as uh, and as as together as they were last season. And Norwich themselves, although they don't look defensively secure at all, and I do feel that they will go down. I do feel that they'll be able to score goals in games. And that even includes scoring a goal at Anfield tomorrow. Liverpool to win the game to nil is very short at 8-11, to 11, which is another reason why I don't like it. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not advocating don't put Liverpool defenders in your fantasy team because they are going to pick up a ton of clean sheets this season. And I personally have gone for two Liverpool defenders in my fantasy team. But I'm not guaranteeing a clean sheet tomorrow at the price of 8-11 to 11 because Norwich were a free-scoring team last year. And a lot of this factors into the, um, to the element of we've just coming back into the season now. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that the Liverpool are going to be automatically the Liverpool that they were at the end of last season. It may take a couple of games for certain things to gel, and that would mean the attack alongside the defence. I think giving the edge here between attack and defence, I would give it to the attack for Liverpool. I think that's likely to gel slightly faster. Last week, uh, Mo Salah did have a lot of shots at goal. Some point, some points he was selfish, but I do think that the captaincy of Mo Salah probably won't fail you. Um, and I think that's more likely to succeed than the Liverpool defence keeping a clean sheet. So I'm going to lean towards um, Liverpool minus one here, which is available at four to seven best price. I do think that Liverpool will cover a one goal handicap. Now, if Liverpool keep a clean sheet in this game, you're pretty much guaranteed to land the handicap bet because I do think Liverpool will definitely be able to score two goals past this Norwich team. I don't think that this Norwich team are the team that are going to come in, unlike Aston Villa on Saturday, that are going to come in, change their ethos completely and be a defensive-minded team. I think that what you're going to get from Norwich is pretty much what you got from Fulham last year, a team that have a brand of football but don't have the players to implement it at a Premier League level so I do think that Norwich could score tomorrow although I'm certainly not predicting it my official scoreline prediction for this game would be a 3-0 win for Liverpool I'm just a little bit afraid 
of um, certainly making our lock Liverpool to nil. And looking at this, um, when the fixtures were drawn up, I looked at it immediately and thought, well, the lock for the first day of the season is going to be Liverpool to nil. Now, I can't really take that risk for a team that um, could just have one deflected shot on goal end up in the back of the net. And that's all it will really take. It will take a momentary lapse of concentration from a team playing their first game of the season and all of a sudden our lock is blown. So I do think Liverpool wins nil. Yes, I do think Liverpool will cover a one goal handicap. Yes. Am I going to make it the lock? No. And the reason being is simply because it's August and I don't really want to take clean sheets for anybody. By all means, I'm fine with doing it on fantasy because fantasy will end up evening out and Liverpool will probably have the best defence in the Premier League. They have the best goalkeeper uh, other than David De Gea. So it's very likely with Van Dijk being the best defender in the world and those great fullbacks that they have and if Joe Gomez can stay fit and be a defensive partner to Van Dijk and fulfil the potential he's said to have, then this will be the best defence in the league. I'm just very sceptical about risking our lot record on Liverpool to win this to nil immediately off the bat. Do I think they will? Yes. Do I think they'll cover the handicap? Yes. Do I think they'll start with three points? Yes. Will I be putting them in a parlay? Yes. But I won't be locking anything up in this game off the bat. And uh, also, do I think Mo Salah will score and be a decent choice as captain? Yes. So we'll move on from that game because I think it's um, it's relatively uh, a relatively easy start for us. But I'm just a little bit sceptical from that uh, that clean sheet bet just because it just seems a little bit too easy. And I just know the type of team that Norwich are. If it was Liverpool versus uh, Aston Villa and Liverpool were the team playing Villa on the opening day, then, yeah, I'd probably go for the clean sheet. And I'm probably likely to do that when we get to the Tottenham game. And uh, we'll get there soon. Because we're going to move on to the Saturday early kickoff, which is West Ham versus Manchester City, where West Ham are the 10-1 to underdogs. It's 5-1 to the draw. And it's 1-4 to on Manchester City. I cannot see past a City win here. Um, again, not advocating a clean sheet for City either. I think, obviously, Liverpool were... The, the stronger defence last year. City, we don't know the situation with Laporte. And last weekend, they had to end up playing with uh, Otamendi and John Stones at the back. Not a defensive partnership that fills me with confidence. In addition to that, we don't know the status of Edison in goal either. So we could be end up with a Man City team that start with Claudio Bravo. Now, this makes both teams to score a very viable option. But to give you more cover than that, what I'm going to go for in this game is for Manchester City to win the game and over two and a half goals in the game. That gives you a price of four to six. I like that a lot because I could easily see Manchester City winning and scoring three goals against West Ham because they do look decent in attack. Raheem Sterling's been leading the line during pre-season. I don't think Aguero is going to be back for this game. There is an off chance that Jesus starts it, but I do think, given the history of Manchester City and West Ham, that they do have three goals in them. What I don't think they've got in them is a clean sheet. So, if they do only manage to score two, you have the backup of West Ham scoring a goal in this game. I do think that's a very solid bet, and it was like Liverpool to nil and Liverpool minus one under lock consideration. And um, as I said earlier, there will only be one lock on this show. Head over to lockbetting.com to see what bets that we do go with. Uh, obviously, on this show, it's all about the leans and uh, and looking at the other markets as well. And obviously, Man City to win and over two and a half goals is a, is a market that I can't talk about on my article over on the SGP where I give the scoreline predictions. But I can tell you here that it's something that I do feel relatively strongly about in terms of the over two and a half goals in this game hitting with neither of the teams um, being notoriously good defensively. And if you look at the history of West Ham versus Manchester City at this ground in particular, where Manchester City love going to um, the London Stadium, it's always goals, goals, goals. Speaking of goals, 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 we look at Bournemouth versus Sheffield United, where I'm definitely expecting goals in this game and a lot of people and me included are 
expecting him mainly to come from Bournemouth. I wouldn't dissuade anybody from stacking up your team with Bournemouth players. Bournemouth uh, won their opening fixture last season against the newly promoted team Cardiff. Um, whether they won by two goals to nil. So I expect a similar fate. I expect a similar fate overall f- from Sheffield United and Cardiff because there's a lot to be compared there. It's a team playing with more guts than, than talent, but inevitably Cardiff went down. And I do think Sheffield United are going to suffer the same fate. Just some statistics I pulled up on this game because I like this game a lot. Uh, Sheffield United have lost four of the last five opening day fixtures. Um, Bournemouth have only lost one of their Premier League home games against newly promoted teams. Now, they've won seven and drawn three. Um, Their only one loss did actually come in their last game, which was against Fulham. Looking at the odds in this game, Bournemouth, you're getting at plus money here at 11 to 10. It's 5 to 2 to draw, and it's 13 to 5 on Sheffield United to pull the upset. Uh, Callum Wilson, a very good a fantasy pick here for this opening game. He got 14 goals in 13 Premier League matches last season. If you want a very secure bet on this one, you could venture into the draw no bet market. That is available at 1-2. to two, And obviously that is something that we could narrowly give out as a lock. But I feel confident enough that Bournemouth will be able to beat the Sheffield United team. They are an established Premier League team. Last time Sheffield United were in a Premier League, which was in uh, 2006, 2007, and although that doesn't have too much bearing on the current team, they only scored eight goals in their 19 away matches and never more than once in any game. Uh, They last scored more than once on the road in the Premier League. It's just top flight. In May 1994, which was a 3-2 loss at Chelsea. It was a season that also saw them relegated. So they don't have very good Premier League pedigree. And although that's not a reflection of the team here, I don't think that they've done enough at all in this window to survive in this Premier League. And uh, this could be a very rough start for them if Bournemouth do turn up and play to their potential. Because if this is the established Bournemouth team who are Premier League mainstays, then uh, it's going to be a hard game for Sheffield United on the opening day. Burnley versus Southampton is next, where Burnley are 8-5, to 23-10 to 10 to draw, and 17-10 to 10 on Southampton. For me, this stands out as the best dog play here, um, if there's any. I think Southampton... Look, a decent team under Haas and Hootel. Uh, Burnley got their home form together at the end of last season and uh, managed to survive, although the Burnley defence wasn't what it was um, in previous years. Um, Nick Pope, I do think, sticks out as a decent fantasy pick because I do think they're going to get clean sheets, but I also think they're going to get some hidings. And uh, of all the dogs here on the board, I do think that Sheffield United do stick out uh, sorry, that Southampton do stick out as a relatively decent underdog here. Everton versus Crystal Palace. When I was talking about games where you look at one side of things and you look at the other side of things and come up with a fairly obvious prediction, um, whereas you have to remember things are never obvious in the Premier League, this does fall into that category. Crystal Palace made no signings, trying to hold on to, to Wilfred Zaha, or no major signings anyway, and Everton who have just simply improved. Most keen from Juventus is a massive signing. They're still trying to get Zaha on the final day of the transfer window. They're still linked to various other players. They've kept everybody that they wanted to keep and they've just got stronger and stronger. You look at this and think Everton definitely going to Crystal Palace and winning. That doesn't always happen in the Premier League. And although I personally am picking Everton here, uh, I would be skeptical about making this a lock or going in with a big play in fact so skeptical that i'm going to give out everton here on the draw no bet market which i'm just trying to find a a price for because i've talked myself out of going uh, straight out for everton there and uh, you do have to take a lot more juice there it's available at four to five but i do prefer it as to losing money outright on everton and uh, crystal palace end up getting a draw or something and then you end up losing on that. I don't think Palace will win this game. Let's be clear. I think Everton have done too much business 
in the window and uh, are, are too confident here to to come and lose to a Crystal Palace team that haven't really done anything in the window. So I'm not picking a defeat here. I'm not looking at Palace as an underdog. I'm just a little bit skeptical about taking Everton at 13 to 10, and I would prefer to have them at 14 to 5 and have that draw refund security in the bank. The last game of Saturday afternoon, Watford versus Brighton, probably the game is getting the least amount of attention. Uh, Watford are available at even money. It's 12 to 5 the draw, and it's 3 to 1 on Brighton. Why would you not bet Watford here? Is the question. Um, Watford haven't lost their opening game of the season since the 2006-2007 season. Uh, Brighton failed to score in five of the last seven competitive map matches against Watford, including both games last season. And uh, Brighton are winless in their last nine Premier League games, drawing three and losing six. Their last victory in this, in this Premier League came on March the 9th, 2019 when they won at Crystal Palace by two goals to one so uh, also excluding the teams that were relegated in the 2018-19 season no side conceded more and scored fewer goals in the Premier League than Brighton a Brighton team that haven't done any business in the window not only would I be advocating a Watford win here I'd probably be looking at a Watford clean sheet, making the likes of um, Ben Foster and other Watford defensive players a good choice here. Um, Watford to win the win to nil last time I looked was available at over two to one in most places. Uh, yeah, you can get it at two to one. Watford to win this game to nil. Um, in fact, you can get it as high as 23 to 10 if you look at odds checker here in the UK. So. Definitely looking at Watford there. A very strong play on Watford, unless, of course, a completely different Brighton team turn up. Now, again, it's worth considering the draw no bet market here. You're going to lose money. And the only reason I say that is because the only other result that I can see in this game is a nil-nil draw. Uh, I think Brighton could come down here and put up a very defensive showing. And that could spoil your Watford bet. But that's really the only danger that I see. And... It, it would be a lot of juice that you would have to take on that. You would have to take Watford at over one to two. So it'd be two to five. It's not something that we can officially tip here anyway. So I'm going to hold firm on that one. Something I didn't do with the Everton pick. I'm going to stick with Watford just to win it in 90 minutes. Up next, you have Tottenham versus Aston Villa, where Tottenham are available one to three. It's four to one the draw, and it's 17 to two on Villa. I spoke about this earlier. Villa are not Norwich, and they've also made very defensive signings. I don't understand spending 26.5 million on Tyrone Mings, personally, but that's what they've gone and done. They've gone and bought him from Bournemouth, a player that didn't even regularly start for Bournemouth. Um, John Terry who's the assistant coach, he must see something in Tyrone Mings that, that the rest of us don't see. For me, this is very standardly a bet on Tottenham to win with a clean sheet, which is available at 6-5. to five. Um, I'd be preferring that than Tottenham to cover a one-goal handicap. This is very diff different to the Liverpool game, whereas Norwich are going to go out there and attack and are probably going to have quite a few shots at goal. And one of them could go into the back of the net. Villa are going to come in to defend. And it's going to be about Tottenham breaking down Villa. Whereas the Liverpool game could potentially see Liverpool scoring three or four and winning three or four one. This game will very clearly be one or two nil to Tottenham. And this is my opinion on these games. Um, obviously, nothing here is official. Want the official pays? Head over to lockbetting.com. Uh, but of course, as I said, I will be doing a lock dog and parlay at the end of the show. We move on to Sunday. Liverpool, uh, sorry, Leicester. Got Liverpool on the brain for some reason. Leicester take on Wolverhampton Wanderers, where Leicester are the six to five favourites. Nine to four to draw, and it's five to two on Wolves. These are two teams that are being very hyped for the race for seventh place. And I can definitely see um, why people are hyping up about Leicester. They look very good at the la end of last season. Brendan Rodgers now is in his comfort zone where he's managing a team that can upset the top six and can certainly break into that top half. They are the expectations that Brendan Rodgers should be should be hoping for. And um, he has very good players here in his team. In fact, he has much better players here than he did at Swansea, a team where he last achieved great things in the Premier League. And of course, he almost won the league with, with Liverpool once, but blew it when uh, Steven Gerrard fell on his ass. So... 
looking at this game, I do fancy Leicester to win this game. I like what they've done, despite the fact that they've lost Harry Maguire. They still have a solid back four. Schmeichel in goal. They have the likes of Chilwell there. They have Johnny Evans there. They have Pereira there. Um, obviously, probably do need to sign a centre-back to strengthen up. But they have Tillemans sitting in front of back four. Really good signing. Would have loved him at Man United. I'm very surprised none of the top six went for him that he stayed at Leicester, which kind of shows the direction that this team's going in. James Madison is a 70 or 80 million pound midfield player. He's really decent. Jamie Vardy scores goals for fun. Iosi Perez is a bargain for 30 million. He's a great signing that's going to accompany Vardy up front. This is a really, really good team. And I just see them being a better team than Wolves. And I think that they'll win this game. Wolves, I think, will have another decent-ish season. Uh, I do think they needed to do a little bit more in the window to vastly improve. And I do think it will pretty much be more of the same from them. Whereas I think Leicester will continue to drastically improve. And uh, although they won't finish in the top six, I do think it's going to be a real tussle between Leicester and Everton for seventh place. And I do think Wolves are just going to fall short of being a part of that conversation. And I think they'll be they'll slightly digress this season. And I think Leicester and Everton are significantly stronger. And they're the teams you're looking at for seventh place and possibly to challenge this top six if somebody like Man United or Chelsea completely fail under the new leadership that they're under. But we'll get to their game last. One more game we have to cover before we do that. And that's Newcastle, no longer with Rafa Benitez, going up against Arsenal. Newcastle are the 16-5 underdogs, 13-5 the draw, and it's 4-5 on Arsenal. Arsenal have looked really good in pre-season in patches. They should have actually beaten Barcelona before they absolutely fell apart at the back. And the back is going to be where Arsenal fall apart this season. It's probably going to be the reason why they don't get into the top four. If they don't get into the top four, uh, they're certainly not going to challenge for the league. I think Arsenal's best chance of a trophy is to take the League Cup semi-seriously or the FA Cup and um, possibly go for the Europa League again. But I, I would say the same for Manchester United as well. The analysis on Arsenal Man United is pretty similar at the moment. Two clubs just trying to use the top four as a stepping stone to rebuild where they're at. But of course, Arsenal um, uh, will always have significantly less money than Man United to spend. Although they did splash out on Pepe this, this season for 72 million. So he'll be a very interesting player to watch. It'll be interesting to see how they go with this, uh, with this front four, whether Ozil makes it into the team, do they play Lacazette and Aubameyang throughout the season? It did look like Aubameyang was getting the nod as a striker, so I don't know how much game time Lacazette's going to get if you've got him in your fantasy team. Are they going to change the formation up completely? Are they going to go with two up front and use Pepe possibly as the um, as a replacement for Ozil, and Ozil will be completely surplus to requirements? Are they just going to go gung-ho and have some kind of front four or front five I mean you just don't know what Arsenal are going to do you don't know what Newcastle are going to do either like there's the the fans are pretty demoralized about the the lack of signings uh, that they've swapped Steve Bruce um, a championship manager for Rafa Benitez but he is a Geordie at the end of the day and you don't know how the players are necessarily at, react to maybe they like love Steve Bruce maybe they're going to play for Steve Bruce you don't know anything until you see these teams play which is why I would tread carefully in terms of stakes and although I do love a lot of stuff on this opening day of the Premier League season and there will be a lot of um, plays going out on lockbetting.com this could potentially be one of them um, they will not be two or three unit plays it's just stupid to come straight out of the traps and do that so my pick for this game will be Arsenal on the basis of the positions that the two teams are in very similarly to the Crystal Palace Everton game where you have one team coming in with confidence having a good window and the other team have done very much have done very little and very much have their supporters um not turning their back against them because Palace fans don't ever do that. They're a very well supported team and as as are Newcastle. But the supporters are sort of fed up with the lack of ambition at the two clubs. So you are looking at teams that are coming in in a negative mode as the two teams are coming in as a positive mode. Um, with Arsenal, I have more confidence here than I did Everton, who I took on the draw no bet. I think Arsenal win outright at this price. Uh, you can get them as at best price of 10 to 11. I've quoted him here at four to five on the site I'm using. It all looks very good for a team that have significantly more quality, confidence and more positivity coming into the season than their opposition. Although Newcastle is a tough place to go and Arsenal don't have a great away record last season. But Arsenal are the lean here in this game. 
Last off, we have my Manchester United taking on Chelsea, where Manchester United are the 23 to 10 favourites. It's 23 to 10 the draw, and it's 12 to 5 on Chelsea. Tough one to pick here, and I think one thing I'm certain about is that both teams will score in this game. I don't have enough confidence in this defence. Chelsea are still looking to ship out David Luiz on the transfer window day, which means that they're going to start this season without Rudiger. So automatically have to go with Zuma, a player that was previously considered not good enough for Chelsea, and Christensen, a player that was dropped by Sarri for being inconsistent. Whereas Manchester United have to play uh, Harry Maguire. He has to make his debut without any match practice in the Manchester United team. I think it certainly lends itself to both teams scoring in this game, which is available at 10 to 11. It's 10 to 11 for, it's 10 to 11 against. I'm very much leading towards a four and I'm expecting a draw in this game. I think if anyone wins, it'd be Manchester United and I'm hoping that Manchester United can get off to a winning start, but I wouldn't, I would lean towards a, a draw in this game, which is available at 23 to 10. And that in itself comes into consideration for the dog play as well for this podcast. So let's finish with that. Let's finish with the lock dog and parlay on this first EPL show of the season. Just a second. What are you doing? You're not betting. You know he's not supposed to bet. Come on, Jerry. It's a lock. Kramer, you've had this thing under control for almost three years now. Don't start again. But it's a lock. No. So here we go with the lock dog parlay portion of the show. The lock on this show, I'm going to lean towards Bournemouth to beat Sheffield United. There was a lot of stuff I liked on this show. I did like Liverpool to nil. I like Liverpool on the handicap. I like Manchester City winning over two and a half goals. I like Watford. I like Tottenham to win with a clean sheet. But it ultimately comes down to this play. I just feel this is a very good situation for Bournemouth given their record against newly promoted teams. I think Sheffield United would have been absolutely stoked to be playing back in the Premier League and would have been hyped for their first fixture. However, it ends up being at Bournemouth, which is very much a championship ground, although they're not a championship club and they are very much established in the Premier League. They have a massive advantage when they play at home because they have a very small, tight stadium, which they'll be used to playing in. And Sheffield United will be used to playing in this kind of um, stadium as well. But I think they would have been optimistic about getting a, a bigger team at the beginning. Their supporters would have been hyped to go to a ground like Liverpool or Manchester United or Arsenal. But instead, they're going to what is seemingly a championship ground where Bournemouth are very familiar with the surroundings, very good in their surroundings. And this is a very tough start for Sheffield United going to this established Premier League team with a championship ground with better players in Sheffield United in every single area of the pitch. So I do feel that it would be a good fantasy pick to go with the likes of Ake in your defence and Begovic in goal and having King and Fraser and Callum Wilson because I am expecting Bournemouth to have a relatively comfortable day here. So I'm going to start this season off by making that the first lock of the EPL show. For the dog play, I am going to lean towards that draw in the Manchester United-Chelsea game. Uh, It was a draw at the end of last season. There hasn't been a whole load of transfer activity from Manchester United other than tightening up the defence. Chelsea obviously were prohibited from buying anybody. And I don't think much has changed. I don't think we're going to settle much here between the managers. Two very equal sides, two managers in a very similar position and two very equal squads as well. I think obviously Man United will be favourites, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Chelsea come away here with a draw. As for the parlay, a very simple one. I'm going for Liverpool outright. I'm going for Tottenham outright. And I'm going for Manchester City outright. The top three in last season's Premier League. Oh, in fact, Chelsea, I think, moved past Tottenham in the end. But the top three in the in the betting market, shall we say, here to win their first game of the season uh, in very good situational spots. Man City always win at West Ham. Liverpool have a comfortable start against Norwich and I don't feel Villa will be able to score against Tottenham or offer much going forward. So I may make that an official play to check out if I do. 
head over to lockbetting.com where you'll also find the first European show of the season. The European show will be back and it will start this weekend with the French League and the German League in action. We are going to launch the European show and there will be a European preview upcoming here on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network alongside EPL preview part two with James George where we are going to make some actual picks. We are just waiting for the transfer window to close before we do so. So that's it for me and your first edition of the EPL show. The EPL show is back. Let's hope we can have as much success as we did last season. From me, that's it. Good luck with all of your bets as always and thanks for listening guys.